Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, I'm gonna go over some uranium, uh, just stocks, ones that I like. There's four in total, and I'm gonna look at the charts and try to explain what I see in the charts. And first, I'm gonna start with uh, what I do kind of as some background. Uh, I look at ratios and ratios on asset versus an asset, and I look to see what assets are cheap in the world. And I find those assets. Uh, usually, right now, those assets are commodities and individual sectors within the commodities, ones that are difficult to bring online quickly, are my highest kind of investments. So, um, ones, so ones with the most difficulty to bring to market uh, with long lead times because you can't respond to the demands is quickly the supply can't respond to the demand so you can have these huge price spikes so if you have a good valuation and they can't respond very quickly it allows itself for a big squeeze basically another thing i look at is the market balance and what the market balance is is the supply versus the demand and what the projections are given the current situation in front of us uranium is has a very good market balance going out many, many years, and it gets worse the further you go into the future. So you've got this improving supply demand uh, characteristic going further into the future. I also look at market conditions, and market conditions are ripe for a commodity boom given the expansion phase of real estate. So we have very good valuations, and they have to be at good valuations at the beginning of a commodity boom in relationship to stocks. We have an expansion phase, which means the market conditions are right for increasing interest rates eventually. And then you've got a market balance, which is really good out in the future. Another thing that I look at is the cost curves. Is the price of whatever the commodity is, is below the high cost producers? In uranium, it is below all the high cost producers. Check. So we have an alignment here, which could be, which could have a very explosive move to the upside at some point and maybe it already started maybe it hasn't so then the last thing i look at once you have basically the fundamental con market conditions in alignment for you is i look at what are the companies that have the least resistance to get their minds into production and for me i think it's probably africa namibia africa so I'm going over a lot of the African companies. I have one on Core Energy, which is my favorite just in, in company in general in the uranium sector. And we'll look at those and the technical analysis. So the last portion is the technical analysis part. Uh, this is just kind of icing on the cake. The cake's already been baked. It's a big cake, looks great, everything. Uh, it's gonna taste great. We've got all the ingredients right. Uh, but now the icing on the cake is to get your entry points and to look at the companies to see what they're doing. Does the market agree with the thesis that I just laid out in front of us? And that's what we're doing. We're looking for confirmation. We're looking for confluence. Confluence is the merging of all of these different pieces of information all agreeing with each other. The more information that you have that agrees with each other, the stronger the case is. So for instance, there's a lot of commodities that I looked at and, and other areas and sectors. I look at currencies. We have the Swiss franc outperforming the dollar. That's a commodity bull market check. We've got the Baltic, Baltic dry index, which is a the cost to ship goods around. That is increasing and surging higher. Check. We've got um, price patterns of a whole bunch of different commodities breaking to the upside. Check. Now, these things may break and they may pull back and then they take off again. Because we are we are at the beginning stages, and what happens at the beginning stage is you get a huge surge, you get a huge amount of buying pressure all coming in the beginning, and it creates a huge move up very quickly. Then what you want to look for is what does the pullback look like? It should be a kind of a leak off of sellers. It should be slow and leaking off. It shouldn't be a huge punch where it outweighs the buyers. So you want a big huge up portion with a bunch of buying pressure and what that means is people are shifting money around 
It's money flows. It's money coming into the sector with with a making a statement. And then the slow leak off of sellers means there's some profits being taken, but there isn't much. So people are are buying it and holding in it. That's kind of what that means. And the better you get at reading charts, the better your entry points will potentially be. But it's also an emotional standpoint as well. You have to be very patient and and reserved, and you have to be able to to pinpoint your your purchases. But I'm going to show you some charts. And this is just icing on the cake, in my opinion. But here we go. So here, here's a. I've got deep yellow in the upper left here. And remember about the buying pressure. We had massive buying pressure in 17. These up days right here, mat, or I should say up weeks. Up weeks, these were up multi hundred percents. And then the buy, the selling pressure was basically muted. So this entire move from 17 to 2020 was an entire move. It was a huge buying pressure move. And then the consolidation period, which lasted for a while and ended right here. Then you've got bigger buying pressure and then the, the sell-off is weak. The sellers aren't selling this. It's just people accumulating all over the place. This entire area, in my opinion, is an accumulation phase, massive accumulation phase. We've been going on up and we've got sideways action, a, a good pop higher this week, a little bit of a sell-off, and we've got a bullish engulfing right here, which usually means that we're going to probably head higher. Watch for a break above this right here, this line. So I'm going to come over here. It's about 60 something cents, 60 cents. And right now, we're at 60 cents, 60 cents, 63 cents. Watch for this to break and close above it. We break out of this resistance area. And looking over here, there isn't too much resistance, maybe at like two bucks, but we could fly on higher pretty quick. So there's, there's, a, there's a possibility when we break this that the resistance becomes a lot less and we can start really starting to fly. So knowing where the resistance is in a chart is beneficial because you you know where you should probably be loading in. And we've seen strength here, so it's okay to do what you want, but you know, in, in terms of I've been I've, I've I was buying into this strength hoping that we can break this pattern here. And I think I think if we break this, we could see some see a good move. Now looking at Encore Energy, here's another one. So we're looking at Encore Energy, and this chart pattern is ridiculous. I, I, I really like this pattern. So we came out, we can see the buyers all coming in, and then the slow leak off of sellers almost back to the beginning. I see this pattern all the time. So boom, 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 huge buying pressure, slow leak off of sellers. It took less days for this to travel this distance than from here back, and it didn't pull all the way back. That's very strong. We still had some leak off. It was a buyer's kind of coming in. If you look at the candlesticks in this area, they're large up candlesticks and the down candlesticks are small. There's no sellers here. This is when you accumulate. Boom, good move higher. And then a sl small, uh, long accumulation phase and then another move higher. And now we're, we're coming back and we're, we're about to try to break this 130-ish area. We break through here. And we have a very good setup. This is at about 130 right here. And we're right there trying to break through it. We've got this massive almost cup and handle type pattern. This thing breaks. There's no resistance here. We could moonshot to $3 incredibly quickly. And I'm not saying that. Two, $3, we could move very quickly up. Almost like it's getting vacuumed higher uh, up here. There's no resistance. All of your support is now below you because all of the volume of all everyone trading is all below you now. All of the transactions in history, everyone is in the green, basically. Why would someone sell in the green? They're going to let it ride. So you're going to probably get a bunch of buyers seeing this. They're going to pile into this stock and there's not going to be any sellers. That's a very good scenario to be in. 
So it's important to see this resistance line and the potential it could have. And looking at history, the setup of the buying pressure to selling pressure is very good over this time. Now, I also did a couple of other, these are also Namibia. Uh, this is Bannerman, looking at it from a, a long term perspective. Wherever the stock trades a lot, see how it traded a whole bunch down here? I mean, there's a lot here and there's some up here. The volume and accumulation is occurring at three and a half cents and below. There's huge support down at three and a half cents and below. So if you were going to buy this, I would be buying the heck out of it. Anything under three cents, I would be buying the living poop out of it because that's where all your volume and support is. It's not going to go much lower than that. It did in the sell-off here when everybody got scared. That's, that's a huge buying opportunity to pick it up. Now that we're above this, so there was not much resistance above seven cents. We shot higher all the way to 16 cents and we came back and this is very common uh, because you probably ran into resistance up here. So looking down here, you can tell, okay, yeah, there's the resistance. It's all back here. All these buyers and sellers and transactions all through here. And once we break this 12 cent area and look where the price is right now, 14 cents, and we've got lots of buying pressure, you could see this thing gap higher at any point. So looking at the candlesticks over here, we still have some sellers here, but once we break through this, it could be a nice steady move higher for Bannerman. So that's one that I that I do like. Uh, and you can also see that the buying pressure is very strong and short with the leak off of sellers right back to the beginning portion. Buy it here. Comes up, comes back. Buy it here. Buy it here. Buy, 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 buy. Buy, buy, gone. Now you're in the money. Let it ride. Now here's Forces, uh, Forces Metals Corporation. If you are looking at this, what I see is a line through here, and there's a bunch of buyers all through here. Look at the volumes. All these guys bought all down here. This is going to provide a huge support area because that's where all your volume is. Big up, see these, see the, the moves here? Big up days, and then the sleek off the sellers. This, there was still sellers here. This downtrend wasn't done yet. Boom, huge buying pressure, big volume, slow leak off of sellers. And see where it came back? Higher low. Big, big buying pressure, big volume, slow leak off of sellers. It came a little bit lower here, but it was a COVID sell off. Big move higher, slow leak off of sellers. Low, higher low, higher low, higher low. I'm discounting the COVID scare. We came on and we broke 32 ish cents, rocketed higher, big buying pressure, big volume. And now we've got this sideways type of movement. I think once we break, once we break 52 cents ish and get above this area here, 60 something cents ish, we could see a nice big move higher. And you can see this fell pretty rapidly, which means that there's not too many buyers and sellers over here. So our resistance, once we get past some of this sticky area, could move quite dramatically. So that's that, that's a good thing. So that's that's Forces Metals. And I, I just wanted to touch some of this and show you guys what I'm seeing in the charts and how bullish I've been on uranium because of the technical analysis. Some of these, some of these charts have fallen quite dramatically. Some of the companies. And what that and it's fallen quite quite rapidly. So what is going to happen is where, where the majority of the volume is on the on the bottom, we're gonna we're gonna try to get through it and it's gonna be real sticky because you're gonna, you're gonna encounter a lot of sellers. It's gonna be pushing and pushing and pushing. And the buying pressure is strong enough, it might push us through this sticky area. Once we get through the sticky area and that resistance lessens, you could see some really big moves. So we're coming out of these basing accumulation patterns uh, at the bottoms. Once we break through and get through these resistance, horizontal resistance lines, it's it's go time. I mean, this is this is it, in my opinion. And if the price of uranium continues to go higher, which I'm seeing uh, with good buying pressure, uh, last uranium bull market, when you were looking at the price move, it wasn't very, the price move didn't go up and come back. 
and, and do these huge corrections like gold. It just marched higher the entire time. It was very steady and, and the steady pressure continued to march the stocks higher and higher and higher, almost in, 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 a, in a fashion that just kept going higher. There was no real big pullbacks. So the, the message here is we're getting through sticky resistance. You can see it on the charts. The charts at the accumulation in the bottom exhibit an incredibly bullish picture. We've got all the fundamentals in line and valuations and supply demand. All that stuff is in check. We've got the price moving and breaking resistance on the uranium price. Previous bull markets in uranium didn't really pull back much. So what I am doing in my strategy is to accumulate all I could, which I did. I accumulated a lot. And now it's to hold. Because if you're not going to get too many pullbacks, and the stocks may pull back, but the price might not pull back much. So we're, we have to look at the valuations. Look at the uranium to gold ratio. We need to look to see what gold's doing and what the dollar's doing. It's gonna, those are going to be all tailwinds to us. The price is going to move. And if we get tailwinds behind us as well, it could move even faster. The conditions are all there. So I'm, I've purchased my favorite companies. And I'm going to ride this thing higher. Let's hope it continues. Let's hope it's an easy ride. Um, when we go on these bull markets, the, the better it goes up, if uranium is nice and steady and it just continues to go up, it's an easy ride. Some of these bull markets like silver, uh, it is an incredibly tough ride. It goes all over the place. Uh, so does oil. Oil is not an easy ride. It's very hard to get a, a, a top in oil. I think uranium, hopefully this bull market is an easy one to watch. It just goes all the way up and then peters out at the top and gives, gives us a nice, clean signal. Fingers crossed. And remember, selling this stuff is incredibly difficult to pick tops. Incredibly difficult. So whatever I'm doing, it may not be right. I'm just letting you guys know that. It is incredibly difficult. And I'm not claiming to be the expert of all experts, but we have a lot of data that we can use and look at. Valuations, uh, we've got supply demand, and this may be a very long bull market. We could be riding this for many years and it could go up a lot. So fingers crossed, hopefully it's an easy ride for everybody. The charts look excellent. The fundamentals look excellent. And, and hopefully we all, hopefully it returns what we want it to return. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.